All right, today in this video, we're gonna change it up a bit. Normally we do hydronic heating pumps. Today we're gonna tackle a Hoffman condensate pump. We have a simplex unit sitting here on the table. We're gonna do a seal change out and an inspection uh, of the shaft motor uh, and just go through it. Once again, I get to work on new stuff. So we're just gonna tear it apart, change the seal kit, and do it piece by piece to show you how to do it. All right, so before you get into tearing the thing apart, obviously you have to isolate your condensate somehow. Make sure it's not coming into the tank because we all know how hot it is. So make sure you reroute your condensate before you start working on the, on the pump and the tank because it's going to be very warm. And then make sure you isolate the electrical on it. Shut the whole thing down because the way I'm going to show you how to do this, you're not going to have to unwire the motor uh, to change the seal uh, and inspect the shaft and everything. We'll make another video on how to take the whole thing apart, but I'll show you an easy way to do it without having to remove the volute. So you've got everything locked out. It's nice and cool so you can work on it. And we'll just start removing the, the pump motor itself from the volute and we'll loosen up these four screws or bolts right here. All right, so I'll grab my wrench and we'll start removing the motor assembly from the volute itself. Now I know some of these are in pits, you know, underground, all different kinds of scenarios. So you're just gonna have to work it out on your own. Sometimes it's easier to remove it from the tank itself. But for the video, I'm gonna do it this way. So we loosen these four long bolts right here. And they're tough to get at. All right, we've got all four of the bolts loose and I'm just gonna leave them where they are. And what I'll show you here is we're just gonna lift the whole assembly up. And if you notice, it's still wired to the float switch on the motor to the float switch. As long as you have enough wire, you don't have to unwire it to change the seal kit. So let's, uh, let's just lift it up. If you notice, the whole thing comes out. Impeller, everything. We'll just set it right here on the table. If you're in a pit, set it on top of the tank to work on it. Um, there's a rubber volute gasket in here that's stuck to the cover plate, which comes with the seal kit. Uh, you can reuse them, and again, I just use a little bit of silicone on them. Just make sure that they're in decent shape. I'll set this one aside, and we'll see if we'll reuse it. Josh, I'll turn this around for you without goofing up the wire here. If you notice, it's just like a closed coupled pump. There's really nothing to it. A seal kit, the shaft of the motor, and the impeller. Now, on the condensate pumps, on this specific condensate pump, Hoffman uses a threaded impeller. The easiest way to get it off is to, on the back side of the motor, you have a plug. Just take a screwdriver and it's a little plastic plug. And we'll just remove that plug and save it. And if you notice, Josh, in the end of the shaft, it's grooved for a large slotted screwdriver. Okay? Now normally these aren't tough to take apart. Sometimes they get seized on, but normally you can just take it off with your hand. So to start, we have the impeller here, Josh, this might be tough for you to get, but I'll try to turn it. Kind of goofy the way I'll set it here, but you'll get the point. So we'll set this here. We'll take our screwdriver and we'll put it in the slot in the back. That keeps the shaft from spinning. Okay. Try to keep it here for you, Josh. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to lock in somewhere. There, I'll just rest it right there. So you get the slotted screwdriver in the end of the shaft and you just unscrew the impeller like so. Josh, if you want to get a look at this, it's just threaded on. Okay, and just remove the impeller and you can inspect it for pitting, corrosion. If you think it's good, hang on to it. 
Of course, if it's just a seal change out, we'll reuse it. And that's all we're doing. So we'll set this aside. Oh, we've got a strange setup here. It's kind of a hodgepodge of the cover plate and seal cavity and cup all as one. This seal actually, the seal cup, will actually spin once it's off the volute because you have two tabs that go in the volute, which you'll see when I put it back together and how to align it and everything. But this whole assembly can come off all at once if you can get it off without damaging the cup. I like to remove just the seal kit first. So that's what, how I'm going to do it. So you just take your screwdriver, and because it's a bad seal, you don't care if you break it or anything. It's your st standard carbon ceramic. It's nothing fancy. And we'll just remove it off the shaft. There's the upper part of the seal, spring and everything. Now on these, the impeller kind of washer ring around the top of this seal kit is a little bit different, but everything is attached on these Hoffman pumps. So we're not going to use it. We'll throw this part away. Now you've got the seal cup or cover plate is what I call it, which houses the ceramic and the rubber boot. This just slides right off the shaft, like so. And I'm going to set this right here for a second, Josh. If you notice underneath, there's a water slinger. Make sure that that's in place when you put it back together because that, if the seal lets loose, it's going to travel up the shaft and into the bearings of the motor and you're going to end up buying a new motor. So we'll remove this. And you can reuse this. All right, now we've got the cup off. We've got the motor sitting here by itself. Now if you notice, on, on these condensate motors, they do not come with shaft sleeves. It's just the shaft of the motor. So you have to inspect this shaft to make sure it's in good shape. If there's pitting, grooving, if it's starting to decay, you're going to need a whole new motor because they don't sell just the shafts for these motors. So we're going to inspect the shaft, and obviously mine is new, so it looks brand new. So as long as it's sitting here, we'll get our emery cloth, and we'll just clean it up, get some of the crud off it. All right. And we'll just leave it sit where it is because it's still connected to the float. All right, so we'll set that aside and we'll get the cup back in here. This is the part that houses the white ceramic. Obviously, we're changing it so it's no different than any other pump. You just flip it over like I do on all the other pumps. Screwdriver between the face of the cup and the ceramic and just twist. And it pops right out. Again, they make these seal kits just like on the other pumps. If you look at the white ceramic, it's grooved on one side and shiny and smooth on the other. The groove side goes into the rubber boot. All right, so we'll throw this away because we're changing the seal kit. And then just take your screwdriver and remove the rubber boot. and throw it away. Now, you can inspect this cup. All these parts are individually sold. So the cup is available, the seal kit's available, uh, the water slinger's available. Uh, they're all individual parts. So in, inspect your cup, make sure that this part isn't pitted, decaying, if it's in good shape, clean it up, and then we'll start to put it back together. All right, we've got the seal kit out. We've got the cup assembly cleaned up and ready to put back in, or a new one if you need one. So now what we'll do is we'll start reassembling the pump, and we'll start with the water slinger that I took off earlier. So the water slinger goes on first. And if you want a measurement, you can take your cup, and you can set it here. And you know where it's going to sit, so you can set that right about there so it's in the middle of the cup okay so the water slinger is set in place now we'll move over to the cup and we'll grab our seal kit it comes in a cute little white box sometimes sometimes brown box and directions which 
We don't use directions. And here's the seal kit. Here's the new volute gasket. All right. And we'll set the volute gasket aside and we'll start working on the seal. We've got the cup in front of us. We're gonna put the white ceramic into the cup area on the cup assembly. All right, lots of soap, just like in all the other videos. No petroleum products. Liquid soap on the cup. Liquid soap on the outside of the boot. And just set it in place and push it in. All right, clean it up a little bit. Looks good. All right, now we'll take the cup and we'll put it back on the motor, just like so. Okay, and it's touching the water slinger, so I'll push it down a little bit farther. As long as it doesn't touch the motor, you can go all the way to the back of the collar. All right, we'll set it back on there. All right, now, that's good. That doesn't even bolt down, and you'll see as we go here, it's a little bit different than other cover plates and stationary cover plates. Now we've got the carbon side of the seal. It's kind of a whole package unit. It's actually quite nice to work with. Get some soap, put it on the top of the shaft here, and a little bit inside the boot. And we're just gonna put it right down onto the white ceramic. These usually go on quite nice. Perfect. Now if you notice on this pump, and a lot of their condensate pumps are like this, but the seal itself on the shaft right here is kind of flush with the rays of the motor shaft. And as you can see this when I push down on it. You're compressing that spring, but it's not stain because there's no tension on it. What happens is, is when you go in, I'm gonna grab the impeller right now, Josh. When you put the impeller on, the impeller makes sure that it gets pushed down on the shaft for the right seal tension. So we'll just keep rolling here and I'll keep going and I'll show you what to do here. Threaded impeller, nothing fancy. Set it on and just start threading it on. When you get it tight, you'll notice that the shaft wants to turn. So, we just take it and set it on its side like when we took it apart. Get our screwdriver back in the back end of the motor. Get it latched, grab the impeller, and tighten it. And again, because it spins in one direction, it's a single phase motor on these WC pumps, these standard condensate pumps. You don't have to worry about direction or the impeller spinning off unless the motor is phased and it's running backwards. Just give it a twist. And that's all there is to it. So you've got your seal kit ready to go. The impeller is back on. You didn't have to unwire it from the float switch. Now all you have to do is drop it back in the way you pulled it out. This is where the tabs come in also. Now, the rubber gasket. Like I said, you can save the old one and reuse it if you want. This comes with the seal kit, so it's brand new. I'm not gonna put any silicone or anything on it to hold it in place. So all you do is you just set it in the volute. And it just lays right in this groove, like so. All right, it's sitting down. Now we can plop the whole thing into the assembly and bolt it back together. All right, we've got everything ready to be put back together. I'm gonna grab the motor, I'm gonna drop it into the volute. Of course, making sure that there's no debris or anything wrong inside the volute. So, we're just ready to put it back together. Now, 
What holds this cup in place is the impeller with the seal kit up against the white ceramic for now. But when you drop it in, this cup, these tabs, have to go into these notches in the volute body. Like I said, it keeps it from spinning. So, as best you can, we'll lift it up. And we'll get that cord the way it wants to be. Alright, trying not to hit that. See, I hit that gasket, but it laid back down. Alright, so here we go. We'll drop it into place. Okay, now looking underneath, we'll find where the tabs are. You see the tabs are off here, Josh? They're off to the side. So, because of my electrical, I'm gonna spin it this way until it drops into place. Keeping an eye through the groove that's in the volute at that rubber gasket to make sure that I haven't kinked it or moved it. Now here come the tabs. I'm going to hold it up a little bit so all the weight doesn't go down on it. There's the tab. Now you're going to have to wiggle it to try to get that eye of that impeller to go inside that wear ring on the volute. And as you can tell, it's not fun. And I got a new one. glad this is happening. Take a look here. There we go. All right, so it dropped right in. Josh, if you want to get a shot at the tab that's in the groove, and then you notice there's still a little bit of a gap here. What we'll do is we'll spin the motor just so it matches up with the bolts. Okay. Just about there. Get it centered. And then get one bolt started. Like I said, it's not going to be fun. Especially if you're in a pit. Alright, we got that one going. And I'll get the opposite one going. Alright, I've got them all finger tight. So we'll start snugging up these bolts. And again, I like to rotate a little bit. Well, anything offset. All right, that's the quick and easy way to change the seal on a condensate pump without having to disconnect it from the float or undo any of your piping or anything like that. Don't forget to put the dust cover back on the top of the motor. It's just a little plastic tab. It just kind of snaps into place. Like so. And you're all done. Open up your valve. Start uh, sending the condensate to the tank. Make sure everything's operating good and it's not leaking. You're ready to pump the condensate back to your boiler. I'm going to smoke. <laughs>